Our next guest has never been afraid to swim against the tide, and that's what he's doing in his view on the bond market. He's also been keeping watch for a possible break in Apple. Joining us from New York is J.C. Peretz, founder and president of Eagle Bay Capital. He's also editor of the technical analysis blog, allstarcharts.com. J.C., always good to hear from you and see you. Um, before we show the charts, you had an interesting comment in why you're looking at uh, the bonds, and it has a little bit to do with where the consensus is. Yeah, you know, if you want to start with bonds, I mean, you know, we, we, you and I, we, we've gone back and forth about this for a while. Um, you know, we really liked it coming into 2014, you know, a lot of bearish sentiment coming into last year, and, you know, obviously we had a, we had a tremendous year, and in 2015 so far we've, we've had a, a nice correction, uh, you know, pretty intense with uh, interest rates, you know, really coming up. Um, you know, towards that 2.4, 2.5 level on the 10-year, um, you know, I think it's time to, to, to see a rally in, um, in, in bonds. I think uh, yields are going to come down from here. You know, what we're, what we're seeing is really the money flow coming out of TLT. Um, you know, some of the biggest uh, in, in the history of TLT. In fact, last time we saw this many outflows from that exchange-traded fund that tracks U.S. Treasury bonds uh, was actually coming into 2014, right before a massive rally, and it's actually sparked uh, prior rallies in the past. So from a pure sentiment standpoint, um, I'd like to take the other side of, uh, of consensus, and uh, I like bonds here, particularly against the June lows. As you can see in that chart, those lows at the, at the lower end of that downtrend channel, those are the June lows, and uh, I think we can own it against that. Below that, you know, then I would say, okay, um, you know, perhaps I'm wrong and, and, and we should look elsewhere. So with that said, I think the risk reward is very much skewed in the favor of the bulls here. And JC, we're going to show that other graph you have that shows that uh, fund flows, because it is pretty dramatic. The fund flows out of the TLT alone. Uh, apparently, we're not going to be able to show it, I'm sorry to say, but uh, they're at levels last seen in 2013 during the temper tantrum and then 2011 when the yeah. U.S. Uh, government was downgraded uh, by the rating agencies. Yeah, Francis, you know, they're scared to death to own the Treasury bonds. You know, from, what, from where I'm sitting, it's just consensus. Everybody thinks that interest rates are just going to shoot up, and this 35-year bull market in U.S. Treasury bonds is over. You know, I, I just don't buy that. I think it's going to be a process, you know, looking at the U.S. Treasury bond market going back 230, 240 years. Um, you know, historically, we don't get V bottoms in interest rates. So I think uh, I think this is going to be a process. The 30 year just hit fresh lows. Um, you know, so I, I think this is going to be a process. I think we're going to get a bounce here in bonds, and I want to participate in it to the upside. The risk reward is very well defined. We only want to be in this above the June lows. And let's talk about uh, the Qs, for example, as uh, what you're seeing in terms of an indication from the Qs. We've sort of been, it kind of looks like the broader market. We've been trying to break out, but we're still in that band. What do the charts on the, uh, the triple Qs tell you? Well, first of all, you know, there's a reason why I want to focus on the Qs here, and it's very simple. You know, when you look at the large cap indexes in the United States, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you know, it's kind of choppy. I mean, it's really messy. What I prefer and why I prefer to see, uh, to look at the NASDAQ 100, the triple Qs, is because the overhead supply is very well defined. We don't have that in the other averages. We had, you know, failed breakouts and things like that. It's just messy. But here on the Qs, just above 111, um, it's very clean. So if we break out above that, then I think that's going to be a huge signal for U.S. large caps and, you know, U.S. stock market as a group. And I think of all of the major large cap indexes, this is the cleanest one. So I think it's the one that, that, that we should be keeping a close eye on. If we get a breakout above 111, that can hold for more than a few minutes. Um, <laughs> you know, I think we're going to get uh, another leg higher in uh, U.S. equities. Now, the other stock you're watching is uh, Carl Icahn's favorite favorite is Apple. Now, uh, it's been, I mean, it's made its new high in March, I guess, actually late February. We'll take a look at it, yeah. uh, I think, with some markings on it from you. What's going on with Apple in your view? It kind of looks like the Q's a little bit, maybe not quite. It does look like the Q's, Francis. You know, um, it, it's, it's the biggest company, you know, in the world. Yeah. It's the biggest component of the, of the, of the Q's. I mean, it, I, I can see why they, they, they look like that. You know, very similar overhead supply right around 134 or so. Um, so that's really the level that we want to keep an eye on. Same thing with the Q's, right, that 111. So in Apple, it's 134. And based on the size of this consolidation, 
Um, if we do get a breakout above 134, then I think we go higher into the, into the 140s, into the mid-140s. Now, here we're looking at a longer-term chart that keeps me a little bit more skeptical in Apple. You know, we have a, a very well-defined uptrend channel going back close to a decade, and we're at the upper end of that range. So not only are we on the upper end of that uptrend channel, but it's also the 161.8% Fibonacci extension of the uh, 2012 to 2013 correction. And those, that, that's why our target was 129, which was hit in February. And we've been very, very neutral and vocally so uh, in Apple ever since, you know, really because it hit that target. Um, you know, we really, uh, you know, we really respect those levels and clearly the market has as well. So that's really what we're watching, you know, really that, that 134. If we can take that out, then it would argue for a move towards 144, you know, based on the size of that consolidation. But, you know, considering looking at the long-term trend, it's, you know, structurally, it's not a place I'd be putting money to work here, you know, from a longer-term perspective. Um, and then shorter term, if this was going to break out, you know, we see these sorts of consolidations all the time. You know, in my experience, if it was going to break out, it would have probably already done so. So that kind of keeps me a little gun shy. Um, but either way, we wouldn't be buying this until it broke out anyway. So it's just really you and me chatting about it. Um, you know, I, I would wait for either a breakout or a breakdown before really making uh, a, a big decision with conviction. Um, at this point, we're pretty much in no man's land like we've been in for the last three, four months. Um, and until that resolves, um, it's tough to get a real indication as to what the next direction is going to be. Uh, and finally, we're going to take a look at wheat. Uh, you look at everything, including the uh, the commodities, and wheat's um, it's kind of been ugly up until very recently. What's wheat telling you? Yeah, you know, um, you know. Speaking of sentiment, uh, Francis, as you know, we do a lot of sentiment work, and you know, this is one of the most hated areas in the world. Um, you know, the entire you know ag space, um, you know, but wheat in particular as well. And you know, we've liked it coming into uh, you know coming into May and June. We really liked it. And it's you know having a great day today. You know, that 530, 540 level to me is key. I think as long as we stay above that, we got a hundred points of upside in wheat. You know, when, when these sentiment levels get so extreme, you know, the unwinds can be very, very powerful. And, you know, we've seen it before. And you and I have been talking about, you know, similar setups uh, for years. Um, you know, we saw it in natural gas at one time, you know. So I, I really do think that, th that this rally has legs. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Um, and the risk is well defined. You know, we really want to really own this above that 530, 540 level that um, we're, we're breaking out above this week, actually. J.C. Peretz, Eagle Bay Capital, allstarcharts.com. Thanks very much. Always good to see you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Francis. You too. See you soon.